Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in! What's going on, Foot Clan? Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you Tuesday, April 7th. Excited to be with you. Mike is here. Jason is here. It's going to be a delicious show. (laughs) Yes, if you're not watching on YouTube, first of all, I suggest you do check it out, youtube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. But Jason is is well-placed amongst... Some bakery items. I'm in donuts, my, to be exact. My native land of a of a donut <laughs> shop. So that's where you can. Uh, when you ran twenty three and me, that's where it was traced back to. Yeah, that like is your, right. your lineage. Do they, yes. Are they like welcome home, son? Twenty twenty three percent European, seventy seven percent donut. Yeah, it's all, it's <laughs> just, just donut. Just donut. Donut. Not even a heritage. It's just what I am at this point. What is uh what is your favorite donut if you have to pick one? Cuz Is it easily a Boston cream uh donut? Really? Not too oh, yeah. rich for you? That's too rich for me. <laughs> I guess I'm cute. <laughs> Thanks. I guess I'm a fool. Mike, do you have a favorite donut? Oh, uh, we've been over this. There is only oh. one donut. Oh yeah, you're Captain Glazed. Glazed donuts. That's so It's pathetic. look, it's you want to call it basic? That's fine. I accept that, but it's the best. Quarterback score the most points. You got to get them. That's that kind of take. <laughs> That's what you, you compared it to. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Today we have, I think, the even more exciting running back ranking By show. far. We're going to talk about uh, our consensus uh, early running back rankings. We just did the top 10 on the last episode of the show. We're going to start with 11 and see how far we can get. We have some news to cover today. We're doing buy, sell, maybe some mailbag. Very excited to announce this. We are going to do a live AMA on our forums this Friday, April 10th. We're doing it at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can post any and all questions. If you've got dynasty questions, if you have uh, draft, commissioner, rules, donut questions, whatever you have, you can participate this Friday, and you can you can post your questions now. You can go to footclanhelp.com. We're going to help the Foot Clan out, mm-hmm. and that'll take you right there, and you can post your questions and participate with us on Friday, like I said, April 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to try to answer every single question. I don't know what I'm putting myself out there for. Wow, you, got nothing, gonna... you got nothing to do? Yeah, I mean, the, the, here's, here's the deal. This is extra content. We, you know, people have questions. We're going to answer everything at Foot Clan Help. That's we're here to help the Foot Clan. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mike, your shirt is throwing me off today. Why is that? Uh, I, I I know it's probably supposed to be some sort of uh, style. It's tie dye. Is it? Mm. But it's like like a dirt with white tie dye. It looks yeah. like a mechanic wearing a white shirt after a long day of oil changes. <laughs> and keeping you, us and on then our you're toes. Done. Yeah, no, I lo- it's very nice. I guess I do see the tie dye now. That's a- it's interesting. Uh, we'll-, <laughs> we'll move on. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. It's too much for the webcam. I get it. Yeah, that's all I mean. That's all I mean. <laughs> we actually, uh, Jason and I both, uh, after setting up a studio that looked exactly like yours, we renovated since then yes so. uh, yeah yeah I've, like i went through all the trouble to make sure that my shot was looking as cool as possible and then you guys just kind of gave up on that and you started using wizardry to mm. i don't know what you're talking about it's, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's uh, you know how hard it was to set up this recording in this donut shop during the <laughs> quarantine so how dare you are those stale that was probably really stale uh here's the buy sell question for today guys and we're talking about matthew stafford 
It's simple. Buy or sell Matthew Stafford as a top 12 fantasy quarterback in 2020. If you want some context, last year he played eight games before the back injury. He was great. He was the quarterback yes. six. He was the quarterback six in fantasy points per game. We already know what a weapon Kenny Galladay is. Stafford was having, you know, one of his best years ever. And 19 touchdowns, five interceptions. So what he do was, you think? He was pacing for 5,000 yards and 38 touchdowns. Now, I, I'm not saying I think he was going to hold up for those types of numbers, but that was the production that he had put up in, in half the season. He was absolutely outstanding, and it was – I mean, th this was almost like we were transported back to early young man Matthew Stafford where he was just slinging the ball down the field as far as he possibly could because he was the leader. He was the man throwing the ball deep more than any other quarterback in the NFL because he's surrounded by Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones. It was a bit surprising with the the coaching staff in tow that that was kind of the game plan that they were going with. But it's 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 hard to imagine Matthew Stafford not being a top 12 guy. If, if There's no reason to think that the offensive game plan has really changed for Detroit, I know they they want to be you know ah we're the tough we're the tough running guys. But if the run is just going to set up Stafford throwing the ball with like thirty air yards every single attempt, then Stafford or then Stafford will be great for fantasy. Yeah, if if you were to take a look the last several years, you know, it, let's say he finished this full season and what was he quarterback six? If he finished in the top ten this last year, that means three of the last four years he was a top ten quarterback. Quarterback number seven in 2016, quarterback number seven in 2017. Uh, so I, th I think there's a lot of reason to buy it. And and the truth is, I would buy it on a points per game basis. But I think you're going to possibly see more of the same. The back injury he's dealing with is sure. significant. So, I mean, when you say at the end of the year, is he going to finish in the top 12? I think that's a matter of does he play 16 games? Uh, so, you know, I would have to go to the judge here and say, is this a top 12 end of season ranking or a top 12 points per game ranking. whatever points per game jason answer the question if it's points per game i think he will be he's right. he's been that I'm, most of his career yeah i'm not really worried about the durability i know last year you know if they were fighting for a playoff spot he might have come back towards the end of that year and he's been one of the healthiest quarterbacks one of the more durable quarterbacks until last year i'm gonna buy it i think he's a top 10 i really do let me get, I, let me ask you guys this question this because this is not really this is not fantasy, but Detroit they are third in the NFL draft, and I have uh, kind of just been thinking about it a little bit more. And I'm of the the mindset that Detroit the team the team they would be better off if they could somehow. It's probably too late to trade Stafford, but they should have traded Stafford and taken Tua at number three. Uh, Interesting. So I yeah, I mean, I, I think that Matthew Stafford is a very, very, very capable quarterback. I think he could take you far into the playoffs if you gave him a good team. I don't know that they're able to do that. Uh, that's, so, what, that's the problem. So to me, I would trade back from the three and get a haul for someone trading up for Tua and use you know the hall of picks to actually put a good team around Stafford who's 32 years old and he's you know he's that strong-armed quarterback type that I think could play till he's uh, this is, 38. This is one of those situations Mike you you talked about earlier you were saying oh they want to be this running team. I that's out the window. They they have to be a win a, win some games team or Matt Patricia is going to be gone. So I think that that would be the thing that gets in the way of a reinvestment in a new quarterback and a rebuild. Patricia has to win games or he's gonna he's gone after That's this fair. year. So um all right. So yeah, so I think I, I'm buying. excited to see him back back on the field. That's for sure. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. We're all thinking about it, whether we want to talk about it or not. What's going on with the NFL this year? I mean, really, uh, a lot of fear out there, a lot of unknowns. I mean, we're sitting here at the beginning of April, and, uh, well, people want to know, is the NFL going to actually have a season this year? I would like to know that. Yeah, I would too, and I, <laughs> I, I understand it. But um, 
you know, we can't put our head in the sand and recognize that there aren't a lot of challenges between now and September. That being said, um, we do have some news. We know that uh, President Trump and a number of commissioners from a variety of leagues had conversations about sports uh, and, and the leagues getting started back up. We didn't get any negative news out of that meeting. If anything, you could spin it as positive, although ultimately we're grasping at straws as a nation trying to figure out timelines on anything. That being said, they expect the league to start in September. Adjustments are being made day by day by the NFL to accommodate more and more things in a virtual format right now, including a memo on Monday sent to the 32 teams saying the entire NFL draft will be conducted entirely outside of all team facilities and in a fully virtual format. But it is happening on time, on schedule. What are your reactions to that news? Uh, my reaction is that the NFL, and this is kind of what I've, I've said from the beginning, they absolutely love their money. And they're going to keep doing uh, everything they can to make it. And so, look, they, they, I mean, this is very inconvenient for players, for general managers, for everyone involved. And the NFL is like, well, deal with it because we're, we've got a schedule and we're going to make our money. So I think that uh, this is great news for all us, us sports fans out there, all the football fans, just showing the resolve to be willing to bend and change and do what it takes to to be on time, to be on track, to have football. Um, I'm very optimistic that uh, you know wh whether or not fans are there, which I mean honestly, I'm I'm at I'm at the studio watching games anyways. Um, you know, I th I think it'll start on time. I think that the only downside of the draft is just it's for the players where if they if this is the moment that they've been dreaming of, I get to go on stage, I get to give the commissioner a hug and stand there because I was drafted in the first round. To me, that's really the only downside of this. I think that the the GMs and the coaches, like, those big boards are set. They know what they're doing. I mean, the only things that could come up would be like last-minute trades or somebody drafts a, a, a player is falling, and then you have to do the, the why is this player falling down the draft board? Is there something that we don't know about? But I think that... They should be able to handle all of that in in the virtual format. So to me, this is this. I think this is great by the NFL. I know that they are probably doing it for different reasons, the financial reasons, but for the country to actually have a sporting event. It's not a live sport, but it's still a sport event that we all get to enjoy together. I think that this is very positive for the country. Yeah, sports are really the one thing that people do at the same time together in terms of television events anymore with all the on-demand, uh, everything else. And I'm excited to have that event in whatever form it comes. I know Roger Goodell's got to be thrilled he's not going to get booed this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they'll find a way. They'll find a way. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it'll, it'll be very interesting. And I, you know, I know you, you joke, Jason, about the league. They, they want, um, maybe not joke, you tell the truth, they want their money. But, we just got through a CBA negotiation where 49% of the money goes to the players. So all of these leagues, I mean, you talk about the livelihood of, of hundreds and hundreds of players as well that I'd like to see, uh, you know, not displaced. So excited about want, that. What I want is Goodell, ha give Goodell like a soundboard so he could be up there <laughs> hitting drops, like making funny, wacky DJ sounds, or and then he can go up there and he can have himself booed. It would be a oh, great no. moment. Like, that would if be he the just that would be the only way he'd get applause. Just go up there and hit an applause track. It's like, yes. No, we gonna, like, just lean in. Know that he would have been booed. So if he hit a boo button, it, like that would be really funny. Are we going to find out this is all broadcast only on IG Live or something? Is that that's where we're going to end up? <laughs> yeah, right. They're going to put this. This is going to be on every channel. <laughs> On It'll be like a full takeover, like a presidential address. <laughs> yes, it NBC, will. ABC, we interrupt this every regularly channel. scheduled broadcast. <laughs> um, hey, more news that you'll be interested in. The Chiefs have restructured Sammy Watkins' right. contract. It finally oh, happened. Mm. Oh, uh, $9 million for 2020 incentive package. We knew that Watkins was not going to play under the terms of his other deal. He was either going to be out the door or renegotiating the contract. I thought he'd be out the door. I was wrong. He's back. And the Chiefs, I mean, ultimately, from a stability standpoint, it's a good thing. Yeah, and, and in reality, he is 
definitely not out the door because it included a no trade clause uh, was part of his agreeing to uh, restructure. He's That's smart to take the discount f- to play with Pat Mahomes, the Super Bowl team. Uh, you know, it, it's good news for, I think, Pat Mahomes. Good news for just about everybody except for McCole Hardman, who I know a lot of dynasty owners were hoping that one of these other two free agent wide receivers on the team would not be back. And they both are. So now he's going to have to really uh, prove his way into the lineup, not just inherit it. And the Chiefs also signed Ricky Seals Jones, <laughs> making his return conveniently for the show. He's making the rounds. What yeah, he is. Hand- it, would Would you say he's a really good handcuff, though? I mean, no, uh, not not one that no. you would put on your redraft roster. But I'm saying, if Kelsey were to go down, don't you think Seals Jones would be valuable there? It'll have, yeah, he'll have. He value. would definitely. He would. He'd run around. So I will put him as a. Player that will be on a waiver wire show should Travis Kelsey get hurt. But I would fair enough. Don't, don't ever talk about handcuffing a tight no. end. <laughs> I'm just saying, back in the day, Trey Burton was so valuable behind Zach Ertz, and you know he's Trey Burton. Once, yeah, yeah okay, all right. <laughs> Eric Ebron says he's not a hundred percent. Cool. Mm. He mm. wasn't supposed to be though. I mean, this is this is his scheduled. Uh, surgery so i mean they he signed this contract this isn't like new scary news of it it's not going well and then uh the bears some news out of bears camp ryan pace talking about open competition at quarterback between nick Foles and mitchell trubisky if he means that how does nick Foles not win the starting job that's uh that's a very fair question i just i'm shaking my head of that yeah i i feel I feel for the Chicago fans, you traded up from three to two to get your guy or your team, I should say. They traded up, who was supposed to be your franchise quarterback, and you're already at the spot of he has to win his job against Nick Foles. I'm saying this like we went through this in Arizona with we thought we were going to have Josh Rosen and they were going to have to be stuck with it. So Chicago fans, at least applaud your team that they are – they have one foot in the, the waters of trying to bail out. This is the transitional period of time to get sure. out from a top five pick not working out. You have to make them compete for the job and, oh. so that you have deniability when, you've, when you give him that job and he flames out or something of that nature. It's, it sucks. I mean, this is the nightmare scenario for anybody investing it's, a high draft pick on a quarterback. Especially considering that this team is one double doink away that was the they were gonna go to the super bowl right yep <laughs> yeah they they were yeah. they were very close has anybody ever kind of failed as a top five pick for this many years and then like he was challenged to compete for the starting role and then all of a sudden it clicked and they became a great quarterback well I, like look i think you exaggerate how many years he's failed i mean like mike just said they were on the precipice of of the super bowl a couple of years ago last year was a struggle no question about it he deserves to be challenged for the job and doesn't look like the future. So, has anybody ever done that? We'll find out. We'll yeah. find out if he can. we'll find out if he can. If you uh throw it to Allen Robinson, maybe a little bit more. Well, he did do that a lot. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to get into the main event on today's show, which is the rest of our running backs, uh the consensus early rankings. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor. That's Omaha Steaks. Look, if you're staying home, which I know you are because we all are, there has never been a better time to stock up on Omaha Steaks than right now. We've talked about it repeatedly. It's perfect. I had it for Uh, lunch. It's meat that shows up on your doorstep. And that comes in handy right now. They deliver the world's best steaks, a huge variety of family favorites. You don't leave your house. Uh, They make a great care package gift. I've done this with my parents uh, you know, make sure someone you love has a full freezer. They deliver uh, guaranteed quality. Uh, they guarantee the safety of each and every order. And uh, you can stock up on the things you need, the things that you love. Mike just said it. He had it for lunch. Mike, mm-hmm. do you ever, are there any non-Omaha meals in your home right now? <laughs> is breakfast uh, is breakfast omitted or are you going Omaha breakfast? Uh, I have done, <laughs> I, I have made some Omaha uh, breakfast some burritos steak and some steak and eggs yeah not too bad so right now 
The Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sales available for our listeners to help your family stock up on the food you love. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar. That's the important part. Unlock the savings uh, for our listeners. There's a variety of ready-to-ship stock-up boxes available now. By entering the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, you can save more than 50% on your order. Maybe uh, maybe even... 55! And get free <laughs> shipping on orders of $69 or more. These packages are perfect for families, and they're ready to head straight for your door with free shipping. Go to omahasteaks.com, type FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and shop today. And we want to thank Theragun for making my body and life so much better. Yeah. Uh, Theragun, you know, sometimes uh, we were just talking about this off the show. Necessity is the mother of all invention. Dr. Jason Wurzlin, the creator of the Theragun, he had a bad motorcycle accident, created this device that just relieves your muscles and tension in ways that you didn't know you could do. That's why there's 250 professional sports teams worldwide that, <laughs> that use these. You see them on the sidelines. You watch when we used to watch uh, professional sports, <laughs> but you see them get used. And all three of us, we have a Theragun. We yes. use it. You can use it a couple minutes on a muscle group before bed, help you feel relaxed and calm. When we're pickleballing, we've told the stories about how much this helps just to really relieve that tension there. It's just, it's designed in a way that is so easy to use. There's no stress, no pressure on, on things. And then after you do one leg or one arm or one side, you realize how bad the other side was because you're like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So look, you can get, you can feel better naturally, treat your pain, get back to your life. Try Theragun risk-free for 30 days or your money back by going to theragun.com slash footballers for a limited time. Listeners will get $150 off of your device up to 150 bucks. That's theragun.com slash footballers, theragun.com slash footballers running backs i've had to bust out the the theragun lately i don't know if you guys if you guys know this grown adults uh not meant to jump on trampolines anymore <laughs> yeah we are not meant to yeah but, I've, I've had a trampoline injury as an adult but uh the the children have asked many many times because we're trapped at home so I've I've obliged as much as possible. Also, you know, getting my cardio in. But by the end of that thing, <laughs> I'm, I'm a wreck. <laughs> All right, early running back rankings, part two, starting at number eleven. You can hear our top ten early running back rankings on the uh, previous show. These are half PPR rankings. Rookies aren't included in these rankings as they have not been drafted yet. But I'm really excited about today because I. I have some questions that I need answers to. And I'm hoping you two fine gentlemen can help me. And they begin with this guy here at number 11. And his name is Josh Jacobs, running back for the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, goodness. He sits at 11 on Jason and my rankings. He's at 10 on Mike's. But I, you know, today we're going to talk about Jacobs. We're going to talk about Miles Sanders as well. And we'll probably get to Devin Singletary. All three of those players are in some ways, bewildering to me. And I think that there's a certain category of players, especially in dynasty leagues, that all three of those guys fit in where they are hard to trade. They are hard to trade for, but they're harder to trade away. Because when players are coming into year two that have each shown potential, and that's what Jacob, Singletary, Miles Sanders have all done, I think for fantasy owners, it's very easy to sit there and say, what if they are LT? What if this is the next whoever, you know, CMC? That is a hard thing to figure out as a fantasy owner. So with Jacobs, I think we all know the potential is there. Last year, he finished at RB18 as a rookie, but that was in 13 games. He had some top tier weeks. I mean, week one, he finishes the number six running back. Week five, he was number three. Week nine, he was number four. So we saw it. But are we going to see it more consistently, especially in the passing game in 2020? I am crazy excited for Josh Jacobs. He is an absolute beast. Like you said, in 13 games, uh, that that's all he played, and he had 1,150 rushing yards. And that's including in week seven, 
if you remember, he hurt his shoulder. He like, I mean, he hurt it badly where he had to leave. He had to get the, uh, the magic shot, but came back, finished strong and then, and then kept going, uh, for five or six more weeks and had some really, really excellent weeks. The very disappointing thing for Josh Jacobs was if you watched his college tape, you knew that this dude was a very capable pass catcher, so you felt like you would you could project real targets for him. That didn't happen, only 27 targets. But if you listen to what is being said by the brash for uh, uh, Las Vegas, I, yeah, I said brash. I, okay, I, I thought a, you said I, that. I threw a little H in it at the end. I don't know why that happened. I, I actually but. feel like I was that was really unfair of me not to jump on that when I would clearly do that if Jason had said it. I unhandled it. Don't worry about that. You meant but, the brass. The brass. Yes. I All don't right. know. Whatever. Uh, but general manager Mayock, there was there is a quote about him talking about Jacobs and his kind of lack of passing production and what they hope will be happening for him. But here's the quote. If he has to stay in and knock down a defensive end, he has to do it. If the linebacker's coming, if he has to scan, those are hard things for a rookie running back, and we didn't want to put too much on his plate, but he certainly has the capabilities to do it. So this, to me, was this was a pass blocking thing that they didn't want to put him in situations where he would fail, or they felt like he was going to get car killed. So they they went with Jalen Richard, they went with DeAndre Washington, guys who have been in the league. Then they know that they could trust them in the pass block situation. I think honestly that is it. I expect that the target share is going to go way up for Josh Jacobs. There was still a lot of targets to the running back position from Derek Carr last year. Uh, between Jacobs, Richard, and Washington, it was 21% of the Raiders' targets. So it's not that they aren't throwing to the position. They just weren't going to Jacobs. And I think that number goes way up. He's easily a 1,000-yard rusher, assuming he stays healthy. And if you get him up into the, I don't know, just the 12 40s? If you get him up into the 12% target share, He's going to be dominant. He could end up easily as a top five running back. Yeah, that's that's really all it comes down to for Josh Jacobs. We've talked a lot on the show over the last couple of weeks about Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb and their 1,400-yard rushing seasons, and can it happen again? Uh, Josh Jacobs was on pace for 1,415 rushing yards. He's excellent, and Mike, you're right. His, his skill set is there, but at the same time, it was there last year. And they just didn't utilize him in the passing game. His 16 game pace was just trust, was man. Just 25. Trust. But that well, trust still has to be earned for this season. He can still fail in that role this season. I remember last year we were on the Lefko show and he brought up the, you know, this is that off season hype train situation where it's like somebody says something. And it's like, ooh, is that a story or is it a story? And it was about Aaron Jones. We said the same thing about his involvement in the passing game. Jacob still has to do it because. You know, this is a situation where if he doesn't, Jalen Richard got re-signed to a two-year deal, and they'll just throw him in there. And, and that's what I was going to bring up is basically they the quote says we're going to get him more involved. The money in the transaction says they value Jalen Richard two-year seven million dollar deal to be a part of this team. So I think Jalen Richard's role isn't going to just evaporate. And if he keeps that role, then that's why I've got Josh Jacobs at eleven. Otherwise, he should be a top six running back. Yeah, he's, he's got more upside than most. And anytime you're in a situation where you can go from you know 20 receptions to 30, 40, the area of his strength in college, there's a lot of optimism. And obviously, we have him rated inside the top 12. So uh, number 12 is Leonard Fournette. I've got him at 14. Jason has him at 12. Mike at 11. Yeah, I don't like it. It's, yeah, this yeah is now just that you like, see it. It's, yeah, it feels bad. <laughs> I don't think 11. it's going to happen. I don't think he can get up there again. See, that's it feels bad because I do. I think he's just going to end up 70, as a top 12 guy. Six receptions. From 70, 22 the year before. Six receptions. Sure. Yes, and I, I get that that will – I don't think that's happening again, 76, reception, uh, 76 receptions. But what also will not happen again is a guy getting 265 carries – over 1,150 rushing yards and getting three rushing touchdowns. So, I mean, you just you you just balance that scale a little bit. You raise the touchdowns up to seven or eight. You bring the receptions down by 30, maybe 40, and I think you still end up with a top 12 guy. Aren't you worried about the potential of this offense, though? I feel like the, the, the pendulum can be swung 
pretty far in both directions with Gardner. You don't have Foles there anymore. If this offense struggles, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Fournette ends up with more than five touchdowns, personally. Maybe. I mean, just just historically speaking, if you have that many yards, you're not going to end up with three rushing touchdowns. I mean, he, he had a ton of opportunity. Uh, he had the third most touches for a running back like it's just it's insane that he ended up with three rushing touchdowns and i personally i believe that they're gonna draft somebody they're gonna draft a running back this is gonna be the the team that that submarines top tier value in my opinion that is 100 percent the question i don't i don't think they're gonna draft a replacement or someone to come in and have an rbbc maybe to be more of what the tj yeldon role was and and a better pass catcher because even though i mean they utilized him in the passing game a lot a hundred targets but he you know you could see it you could see the difference between him catching a ball and you know a Christian McCaffrey or you know an, an awesome Eckler where when they grab the ball it's it's thoughtless it's in stride you know they pick up the extra yards but he is built for that role he is currently still on that rookie deal I think they're gonna run him into the ground he'll be a workhorse this year and the reality is if he doesn't get injured he's going to be near the top 12 just from volume alone yeah, that, I was gonna say that they're gonna Demarco Murray him. Like they're just they're gonna use him up. They're gonna put another three hundred touches on his body and not re-sign him. I I struggle with with that concession because of the fact that they're not gonna re-sign him and they didn't win with this game plan. This game plan did not lead to a successful season. Giving Leonard Fournette this amount of work, not having options behind him, I would I would be I'm expecting them to draft a running back in those first three rounds wow okay so you feel like a day two running back i i think that they're one of those teams that might consider that yeah but they haven't yet so it, as it stands right now you have a track record of 1100 yards and 76 receptions to go on uh this was a guy that was the running back eight back in 2017 dropped all the way to running back 40 in 2018 and only eight games and then right back at rb9 last year so uh Right on that edge of RB1 territory, you guys both have them inside of it. I have them just outside of it. I think at this point, you're just waiting to see if the shoe drops at the draft, and if not, you probably have 250-plus carries, right? Yes, he will be a player that you're not excited in the slightest to draft, but he will. I, if if they don't spend a day two pick on a running back, lock it in. His He's going to carry the ball 250-plus times. All right, Austin Eckler comes in at 13. He's number 13 on uh, Mike's rankings, early running back rankings. He's number 13 on mine as well. Jason has him at 18. I am not going to disparage that disparity, okay? Because this is a player that's very difficult to project. I love the contract, but the amount of variables that the Chargers are facing this year with a different quarterback, with what's taking place, Melvin leaving, you know, Eckler's going to have to do what he did last year, which is catch the football. 92 receptions, 993 yards, eight touchdowns. Eight touchdowns through the air. That's a tough number to repeat. Just 132 carries on the ground, that could go up. But Jason, talk to me why you have concerns about getting him inside your top 15. I have concerns because he's a pass catcher uh, as much as he is... I mean, he even talked about it when he was on the show. He's an offensive weapon. And Tyrod Taylor is not someone I think he's going to utilize him anywhere near the degree that Phillip Rivers uh, did. When Austin Eckler was on the show, he was saying, when the when the play breaks down, Tyrod is able to make something happen with his legs. Phillip Rivers can't do that. When the play breaks down for Phillip Rivers, it's always dump it down, check it down. That was his out. And so you, you had Austin Eckler last year uh, you know, fewer than 600 rushing yards, but he was a great fantasy option because of the passing game. Go back and look at, you know, when uh, when Tyrod took over that Buffalo team, he had LaShawn McCoy, one of the best pass catching backs in his prime, and he caught 32 balls. Uh, the next couple of years, he got up to 50, but that was a workhorse back. That was a guy who was on the field at all times. And that's not what Austin Eckler is going to be. He's going to be, you know, uh, even if he's the lead dog and they don't go out and sign somebody in, in the or draft somebody in the draft, um, he's he's not going to be a workhorse guy. His running totals are going to be low. So if his receptions aren't up near the level that they were this last year, 
uh, I, you know, that's where I see him more as a back end RB two, as opposed to the sensational fantasy asset he was this year. I'll I'll jump in. It's Eckler is very tough to to navigate. I I act I liked that he talked about when he was on the show that the team views him as an offensive weapon and not trying to force him just to be a running back. I totally agree. The checkdowns won't be there, but there will be plenty of designed plays that the that Austin Eckler will be the first target. If they don't add someone in the draft, and I'm talking to the Chargers, and they're moving forward with Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson, those guys are basically both the same size. I mean, they're both 200-pound running backs. So this isn't like, well, Justin Jackson's the big guy who's going to go in and grind it out and be the Melvin Gordon role. Like Eckler may see 175 carries. It, it, even it, his targets definitely will go down. And just to speak to that historically, you know, running backs with 90 plus receptions since the year 2000, it has happened nine times. Christian McCaffrey repeated. Then, generally speaking, the other guys saw a massive plummet. We're talking like 40 plus plummet of receptions the following year. So we'll see if if that's what happens. But the contract, the fact that I don't think they can spend a higher pick on another running back, I, I believe that Austin Eckler will be the the leader of the timeshare and still see 60 plus receptions. Yeah, I I my ranking is a reflection of his talent and them figuring out how to get yes. a talented player of the football, kind of the way people used to view Darren Sproles in fantasy drafts, sure, who kind of found his way near the top. I could see the carries going up, the receptions going down, and maybe the fantasy finish going down a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Miles Sanders at 14. He's one of six rookies ever with 800-plus rushing yards, 50-plus receptions, and 500-plus receiving yards. That is a great rookie season, especially from week 11 on where he had three finishes in the top 10 at the running back position. He is very difficult for me to figure out a value on in Dynasty League. Jordan Howard is gone. Sanders proved to be a great weapon. I think we all agree the Eagles are a candidate to add offensive pieces in the draft. They haven't added them thus far in free agency. And I think Miles Sanders has the capability to really improve upon 179 carries as a rookie. Where do you guys sit? Now, I have him at 12. I have him on the fringe. I got him right. on the edge. Jason's got him down at 20, Mike at 16. I agree his range of outcomes is wider than many running backs at this range. But I, I right now, I just don't see other weapons in Philadelphia that I have confidence in. Yeah, I, I did I, like I, that they used him... Uh, like once he became a starter at the end, he was seeing solid volume inside the ten. He saw seven carries inside the ten once he was uh, the starter at the end of the year. Amazingly efficient through the air. There were three running backs uh, over over forty targets who had a yards per reception over ten. Austin Eckler, David Johnson, and Miles Sanders. So like he was in great company for elite pass catching running backs. But I'm with you, Andy. That of of his range of outcomes, if you told me Miles Sanders is the running back eight, I'd say, yeah, that makes sense. If you said, ah, he had, he finished the season as the running back 32, I'd be like, ah, yeah, they, yeah that make, makes sense. It's like, what is Doug Peterson going to do? Because we've never seen him commit to one running back being the primary guy, but we also haven't seen him spend a, spend a second round pick on a running back. So he, uh, he is all over the place to me and just very, very risky, but but really high upside. Yeah, I mean, from from my vantage point, I think Miles Sanders is a good player. The reason I've got him down at twenty is solely, uh, I mean, if if the, if the you know when we're making these rankings, we've got to weigh in what we think the odds, you know, the the probabilities are here. And I don't think there's a very good chance at all of the Eagles going in with basically Boston Scott and Miles Sanders as the two running backs and not adding someone significant in the draft. You look at last year and how the how the season played out. Once you got to about week six, all of a sudden, Jordan Howard became the guy. They're like he's yeah. the better running back, and they made him the starter over, uh, you know, Miles Sanders, who got the start from weeks two through five, and he was dominating. And then through those weeks when Jordan Howard was dominating, they were giving Miles Sanders three carries, six carries, three carries, ten carries. It was like 
Jordan Howard, they viewed as better. Now, at the end of the season, Miles Sanders was very good. And so is that, but that was without Jordan Howard. That was with Jordan Howard gone for a lot of those. And so I just don't believe that the team sees Miles Sanders as a workhorse back, as a three down guy who can carry the load. And I, and so my ranking is based on what I expect the Eagles to do as a franchise, uh, as a team that's always been heavy RBBC. Um, he is talented. I mean, I don't think ranking a guy at 20 is is really that bad for a guy who, you know, unless he's getting 265 carries, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, he was. He finished at RB 15 last year despite the slow start. Uh, this is the home. This is where I want Carlos Hyde to go, just for the record. I'm petitioning yes. Carlos Hyde to arrive okay. in Philadelphia, and uh, that would make me feel very secure in my top 12 ranking of Miles Sanders if that were to happen. So uh, I'd, I'd move Sanders up a little bit. That that's such a good place for him. He's just like, all right, yeah, Jordan Howard could do great. it. Carlos Hyde, you're in, in Philly. Um, and he, Miles Sanders, was another player like Josh Jacobs that I think there was a confidence level in the rookie running back versus, um, you know, a guy coming in in his second year. So we'll see what happens there. Was always impressed with Miles Sanders at Penn State, and obviously impressed with those rookie numbers. But hey, who else is going to be part of that committee? Todd Gurley comes in at fifteen. Mike's got him down at nineteen. I have him at sixteen. Jason at thirteen. We've talked a lot about Gurley, so we don't have to linger here very long, but obviously goes to Atlanta. It's an ideal situation for him, considering the possible outcomes from leaving the Rams. We know the history. It's illustrious. It's great. It's awesome. We know what Devonta Freeman's looked like in Atlanta the last few years, and, and I do worry a little bit about whether we're going to relive some of those type of seasons with Todd Gurley, but the opportunities before him on a, a high-powered offense. So 16 feels fine to me. <laughs> it feels fine. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like if I left a draft with Fournette and Todd Gurley, that will just be the, the most meh I've ever <laughs> felt about anything. It's probably fine, but you just are not – you will not – feel like you've you're reaching for the stars you're just like yeah i've oh, got I, meh i Can know I how it feels like Gurley in the fifth round and then i'll I, feel better about it I, I know how it feels uh my dynasty team uh my two running backs are todd Gurley and Leonard Fournette. I'm oh like, oh hmm, okay i'm back now to back champ. I get the ranking. i'm back to back champ but uh oh this is a know. reward a reward ranking is that what <laughs> yes. that is no, this is not a Wait, reward who, ranking. Where, where was Fournette? Let me see where Fournette was for Jason compared to. Okay, all right. Mike, Mike was a little higher. All yeah. right. No, this isn't a, number a one and two. Of, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I, I, I think that Todd Gurley has plenty left to give. The offensive line last year was horrendous, and they're bringing him in on a one-year contract. There's no reason not to. They which don't need which to, line are you talking about? The Rams or the Falcons? Yeah, both. Well, they're they're both <laughs> bad. But my my point is, last year the Rams' offensive line completely fell apart. The health of that line. Do you remember? At one point, they were trading for guys backups to immediately come into a starting role because they just had nobody to play, and then those guys got injured. Um, you know, so I don't think all of it was on Todd Gurley last year. Um, as far as his efficiency coming down from the years prior, you know, he, he, he played 16 games. And I, I think that when you look at the beginning of the year, how they were really taking it easy on Gurley versus the second half of the year when they said, Hey, we got to make the playoffs. We got to go. And they really used him. And he was very good for fantasy. He was a top 10 back during that stretch. Atlanta has him on a one-year deal. Go, go use the guy. See what you got. You, you got Dan Quinn here who is. You know, you talk about Matt Patricia needing to win. Dan Quinn, we were waiting every single week this last year for him to get fired mid-season. It didn't happen. Edo Smith is a turd. He's oh. not good. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Shout out to you, my, is it, my man is that Rex. Our Rex Ryan is speaking yes. right now. People no, that was a good man. That, good. Good. No, that was a shout out to my bud Rex out there. Um, look, Edo Smith is not good. And so th there's they're going to give what about Todd Gurley the Gurley? word. A turd girly. Oh. <laughs> That's it's funny. I will give I will give you that it's funny. But no, I, I think Todd Gurley is going up to, to be to you, Todd. What uh, you become. A, a good asset here. I mean, the biggest issue for Todd Gurley was all of his receptions disappeared this last year. Well, yeah. Matt Ryan 
is going to utilize Todd Gurley in the past game. He utilized Devonta Freeman for years. Uh, they lost Austin Hooper. So yeah, I think Todd Gurley has enough work. I'm not that scared of the knee. Maybe that's foolish, but 59 he, receptions last year for Devonta Freeman in spite of, you know, despite a very bad wow. year. Seriously? 59 yeah. receptions. I do not remember that. Just 6.9 per catch though, because uh, he, did, he, they didn't go very, very far. Because he was done, and, and only 31 receptions for Todd Gurley last year, who is clearly a very good pass-catching back, as seen the, the two seasons previous. We talked about it. It might be the right exit strategy for the Rams and still a good situation for Gurley for a year. Uh, Mike's got him at 19. He's got him the lowest. Um, say something bad about him for a minute before I move on. Uh, well, I can say that the utilization of the running back was interesting over in Atlanta. They had 11 carries inside the uh, five. And to put that in perspective, Frank Gore himself had 11 carries inside the five. Wow. Yeah. It's going to come down to those touchdown numbers and how, how often Gurley can get on the field, whether they end up uh, sharing the load a little bit or whether it looks like it does right now that he'll have the majority of it. Damian Williams. Mike, I saw when you were going through your initial running back rankings. Damian Williams is our number 16, by the way. Jason and Mike both have him at 15. I saw you at him at 15, Mike. I hadn't seen your rank yet, Jason. This is another player. You put, you know, you yeah. got those three second year guys that have question marks about their value. And those guys are ranked, by the way, in order of confidence for me, really. I have most confidence in Jacobs, then it's Miles Sanders, then it's Singletary. But Damian Williams, I don't know. Yes. I don't know what kind of uh, situation you are in where you have confidence in Damian Williams. Well, so Damian Williams, as as I was building up the stats and you know, remembering it, it was a wild ride with Damian Williams and trying to remember all the intricacies of what actually happened for Kansas City of they go into the offseason, they declare full confidence in Damian Williams, he gets hurt, he starts missing a whole bunch of training camp, and they have Carlos Hyde there, and all of a sudden, the reviews of Carlos Hyde in training camp are absolutely glowing, and so glowing that they traded Carlos Hyde away, Damian Williams comes in as the starter, or he finally gets back on the field, is the starter, gets hurt right away, comes back, doesn't seem to have his job, which was strange because, you know, Shady's doing okay and Darren Williams is there. and But eventually he does get his job back and he was actually excellent. He was excellent for fantasy purposes down the stretch of the regular season and then the freaking playoffs. Holy crap. When he puts up 46 carries uh, for uh, – or 46 for 190 – apologize. 46 for 196 with four touchdowns. 94 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns on 20 oh, targets. About the, he did the Sonny Michelle. He did the Sonny Michelle playoff yeah. run? Yes. And what was interesting about it is you look at his actual snaps. When he's on the field for offensive plays, that skyrocketed. Absolutely skyrocketed in the playoffs. In the regular season, he had never seen more than 73%. He saw no fewer than 85% of the offensive snaps during the playoffs. When it was time to win, they went all in on Damian Williams. J.D. McCoy became a healthy scratch. I I went with the, the the ranking of 15 because he also could go very he could go way up or he could go way down. This is all based on the draft. What it's kind of capital do they spend? It's too high for me because what if what if they don't draft anybody until the the fourth round? What if they don't then draft I'll probably, back at all? Then I'll probably come around like you guys convinced me to do last year. But there were five games that Damian Williams was valuable for fantasy owners last year during the regular season. And the reality is the second Andy Reid had the opportunity to bring somebody in, there seemed to be frustration with the injury situation for Damian Williams. I highly doubt that they want to be in that frustrating situation again this year. So my confidence of putting him there is based on the evidence of last year. I know the playoff run was great, and I have no doubt it's Kansas City. Insert name here exactly. as full-time running back, and they belong in the top 15. Well, and what you just said is synonymous for Damian Williams. It's just an insert name here. That's who he is. I I've I've long stood that he's not a very good running back. Which is, Are you seriously still holding on to that? 
I did you watch the playoffs? It depends I on your definition of good, Mike. Because if you play five games, if you give fantasy owners five out of sixteen relevant games, I'm not that's not good about, for fantasy. I'm not talking about fantasy. We're talking about Jason has held on to this. He grasps as he's falling off the cliff, saying that Damian is not a good not, between the tackles runner compared to a lot. Is of Is he a good running back? Is he a good football no, player? I'm I'm, ta- I'm I'm saying what Andy is saying. He's not a good quintessential running back but is he super fast and when you get him the ball out on a on a screen when the whole defense catcher. is looking he's elsewhere the oh my goodness he's fantastic look i i've got him where he you had got 100 him, Mike. rushing yards in the super bowl against san francisco he was awesome in the super bowl he was awesome i mean i've seen bad players have great games and i'm not <laughs> saying he's a bad player i'm There's just, just saying i've seen it before between derrick henry running the football and damian williams they do it I, differently that doesn't I mean, make him bad it just is it's not prototypical mike you and i have him at the exact same spot we both got him at 15 because i think the value for fantasy is clearly evident and is there and you combine that with the fact that the chiefs only have five picks so it's is a matter of are they going to use that on a running back? The fact that they only have five says it's going to be more difficult to do. Maybe they sign some undrafted guys or get some older vets like they tried to do last year with Carlos Hyde and Shady. This is, we did Those this all last out. year. This is all a repeat. We yep. did all of this last year. He finished RB35, so he doesn't get that placement in my rankings. That's why. Doesn't, yeah, he mean, had a great playoff run. He probably should have been the MVP. He, he made Mike see visions of what he could have been during the season if he had been healthy and gotten the ball every week. But that's, I'm not, that's I'm what not doing was, the same thing every uh, this uh, year. That's fine. But but then it just sounds like you're projecting Damian Williams to get hurt. No, I'm projecting Damian Williams not to be leaned on. They didn't have a choice but to lean on him in the playoffs. And they right have, now... They, they didn't have another option. Right now, They're they don't They're going to put themselves option. into a position to have another option. Well, and, and then my rankings will change because right now, they just don't have anywhere else they can go I last think year i was so win. resistant to him and i just started moving him up and up and up as we got closer to the year because it seemed like he would have that opportunity and maybe you're right maybe it's really more uh maybe it's burns maybe it's fantasy burns that are, that, are, which are is, biasing me a little bit but that is totally fair look at it the final five games of the regular season running back eight running back 16 64 because he got hurt in that game if you want to hold that against him that's fine then he comes <laughs> and then he comes back Running back 14, running back four. That's how he ended the year. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, but it that, was just a that, span. It was spanning eight, eight weeks. Yeah, I was going to yes. say, that was a month-long <laughs> gap you left out there because he was injured, and that's why he finished running back 30-whatever. Look, I, this started off by saying he's a very difficult player to rank, period. I like. I, I, I want more information. I need more. I need more from yeah. – the. I need the drafts, and I need some more of this, uh, this offseason. But I get it. Right now – He's he's a Super Bowl champion and he's the guy in the backfield. Oh, uh, here's another hard player. All right, let's talk about Lev Bell. Le'Veon Bell. Last year finished as the RB17. This was a troubling year from Lev Bell. 245 for 789 and 3. 66 receptions, which is respectable, but just 461 yards on them and one touchdown through the air. It, the toughest thing when you look at his consistency over the course of the year, yes, he finished as a relevant fantasy player pretty much every week. But no, he didn't really give you a week winning performance ever. I mean, he had one finish in half point leagues inside the top 10 and and he was like, eh, nine is okay for me. I'll just go to nine. I had three other performances at 10. Isn't exactly. that inside the top 10? That's just... That's, That's always yeah. hard when it's the yeah. semantics of saying is he inside the okay. top 10. Because now he's, he's done it four times. But that's the kind of argument that Lev would make to you about how he had a good year. And <laughs> yes. that's not that's not what we need right now. As fantasy owners, we're burned by what took place. In, on, in one respect, you're like, how could it be worse than what you got from Lev last year? Big contract. The team struggled. You, you imagine it's got to be better. Now, he sits at 17 on our rankings, so we're sitting him near the top end of the RB2 range. Jason, you got him at 14, Mike at 22. I'm at 17 on the dot. Yeah, I, But I'll, Adam I'll, Gaze, man, he just, his aroma, it just covers all players on that yeah, roster. Yeah, it's, it's not Stop good. Stop talking I mean, about it. Their, their offense was obviously very bad last year. 
Uh, Lev Bell was not efficient, and everyone was disappointed when you drafted him, which means he's not going to be desired this year. People are going to assume it's all gone and fallen off, but he is a true workhorse. He is uh, out there on almost you know every down. He's the receiving back. He's the goal line back. He's the first down, the third down. He gets the volume. He finished as the running back 17 this last year in 15 games with only four combined touchdowns. I just don't think that he's getting 245 carries and 66 receptions and staying in only four touchdowns. You also had the beginning of the year when Smooches, uh, their main quarterback, was out. Wait, I thought you were talking about Jason J JD McKissick for a second. <laughs> oh, Jason, yes, Jason. that's that's all. He he was actually a little bit better in those games. Sure. No, no, no. I, I realize average. that. I, no, I, I know that in the splits with and without Sam Darnold, I, but I'm talking about the team as a whole, the offense as a whole, because sure. for him to get more than four touchdowns, it's not a matter of, is he better with Darnold or without? It's, are the Jets going to be able to take any step forward? They've tried to address the offensive line this year, which is was obviously a massive problem last year. They were so bad, um, but I'm just saying another year, you know, you, you've got now year two in stupid Adam Gaze's system, but with a young quarterback developing and a better offensive line, he's still going to be the bell cow. And if he finished running back 17 last year, I would point the arrow up over the year before, not down over the year before. That's I, where I've got him at 14. I would be so much more like Lev Bell nestled in as running back two on my roster is wonderful. That'd be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's just a great situation to be in. It's like the years where you would get Frank Gore as your running back two, and he would always finish. Pretty, you know, he, he never won people leagues, but he was just so consistent. He had all the volume every week when you Double plug him in as your points as your running back two. Is just like forget about this slot on my roster and build build elsewhere. It was a really nice thing. That's what I think you can get in Lev Bell, and he's he's not going to cost a lot. He's really and people do not want Lev Bell. Well, define a lot. I think he will be drafted as like the running back twenty. So I mean, you know, I'm saying like, give me a round. What round do you think Le'Veon Bell is drafted in? Uh, well, I guess if, I'm guessing twenty would be around third the round, round four, third, yeah, late third. I, that's what I think he'll be at. And if, and he, be if he's a fourth okay round pick, it. I'm I'm feeling great. If he's yeah, a, that's early fair. fourth, he's my fourth pick off the board or something what just what feels bad about it and uh, i'm we said it i'm i'm at 22 that's probably too low but he just you, it feels like you're not drafting upside i know which, that feels bad to spend a fourth round pick on a player where you feel like you're not taking upside you're just taking something that safe is just real safe uh it's it kind of sucks yeah i was gonna say that the damian williams versus lev belt 16 and 17 feel like two different strategies for fantasy owners right it's like are you buying into the best offense the super bowl champs the opportunity for you know top five weeks or are you buying into clinton portis reborn which is a sad reality for lev bell because we were not talking about him like this you know for well, years for years but we years. we talked about all offseason our concern about can that running style work behind a really bad offensive line and i think we got the answer it can't all right, 18, Marlon Mack, 19, Mark Ingram, and 20, Melvin Gordon to round out the top 20 running backs. Marlon Mack, Mark Ingram, Melvin Gordon. I'm going to give you some more names, and you can circle back to anybody you want to talk about here. 21, Devin Singletary, uh, who I have higher than you guys. Uh, James Conner at 22. Carson, 23. And carry uh, on Johnson comes in at 24. Uh, well, it's still in that RB2 range. Fellas. My wayward son. I feel like I jump we in. need to be quarantined from carry on Johnson's music for like an off season. Yeah, that, that's fair. I'm going to jump in though with Marlon Mack because day after day, I'm getting far more excited, far more excited for Marlon Mack and what he can actually be with Phillip Rivers as his quarterback. We already know what he did last year. He was a 1,000-plus rusher, eight rushing touchdowns, one of the best offensive lines in the entire NFL. And now you have Phillip Rivers who checks down. I went – it checks down to the running back. I went and I looked at Phillip Rivers over the last three years because here's something that we can say with 100% certainty about Phillip Rivers 
each of the last three years. He's gotten every worse. year he gets older. <laughs> Wait, yes. what did you say, Jason? I snuck in. A, he's gotten worse. But oh, yes, yes. every year See, he gets older. That's that's a ridiculous statement. But what what you can't argue with? Every year he has gotten older, and he is getting a little bit slower. Here's what happened the last three years with Philip Rivers and his target share going to the running back position. In 2017, it was 22.5. That's very healthy. Love it. 2018, and that, and that was 83 targets for Gordon, 35 for Eckler. The next year, 27% of his targets went to the running back, 66 targets to Gordon in only 12 games, Eckler at 53. And then last year, 29% of his targets went to the running back position. And each time... There are two running backs who are getting a healthy dose of targets. So if you want to get all excited about Naheem Hines because he's the pass-catching running back and you feel like that's going to be his role, that's fine. But Marlon Mack just being on the field as the primary first and second down running back, he will see the ball a lot through the air. And Marlon Mack can catch it. Like Melvin Gordon didn't project as a pass-catching running back coming out of Wisconsin. His final two years in college... You had a year with one reception and a year with 19. Marlon Max, final two years coming out of college, 16 receptions, 28 receptions. Like the dude can get the job done through the air, and Philip Rivers is going to force the issue. I'm getting crazy excited for Marlon I know Mack. you are, but like, here's, here's the concerns that I have. One has to do with the hind snap, you know, just being on the field on third down. 44 receptions last year, 63 the year before. Mack had what, 14 receptions last year? Yeah, so, but from J because of Jacoby, Jacoby's not checking yeah, it down. Yeah, I, I don't know. I look. You also had post postseason comments from this team about resistance to a long term deal for Marlon Mack. I don't think the team is as happy as you are with his performances, and so those are my two concerns. Is you're going to have? I mean, you're going. One guy's got forty four receptions. The other guy's got fourteen. You're you're going to count on Philip Rivers to dump it down to Marlon Mack based on collegiate evidence on first no, and second no, no. down. No, no, the, the collegiate evidence was just saying that he can catch the ball. I was saying, like, because the comparison was people think of Melvin Gordon now as a pass-catching running back. He wasn't thought of that coming, uh, coming into the NFL draft, and that, but now we think of him that way. I'm just saying Marlon Mack has that skill set built in. And, dude, last year, Melvin Gordon, 55 targets in 12 games. Austin Eckler, <laughs> thank you. Austin Eckler, the 108 targets. That's two running backs over 50 targets. And that's it's all I'm talking about. It's a bet on about. Rivers, though. It's this a bet, is one, it's a bet this on is 100 Rivers. This is 100% a bet on Rivers. And on top of that, Marlon Mack is already, like, he's a good runner and has a great offensive line. Like, everything is set up for Marlon Mack to just be great this I could year. see double-digit touchdowns for Mack this year. I don't know if I'm on the pass sure. board. Jason, uh, what do you think? Look, I, I was a huge Marlon Mack believer last year because of the talent. I think Marlon Mack is a really good running back. Mike, you just brought up their offensive line. If the receptions were to come, uh, he would be a phenomenal fantasy asset. And and I think that you know when you talk about both backs having 50 targets, that gets me excited because I am one of those people. When I hear Philip Rivers coming, I think, oh, that's great news for Naeem Hines because Philip Rivers is going to check that ball down a lot. I, I am 100% yes. certain of that. But it's probably going to be to both of those guys. And uh, Marlon Mack, I think, has the skill set. So you got me excited. Uh, well, you got, I want to talk. You got Jack Doyle there to, to be Mr. Checkdown. <laughs> check down Jack. Hey, my dynasty team thanks, uh, oh, thanks check, him for his service. He can't be rebranded. He's already baby hands. Baby hands. But, but check down uh, Jack is pretty good. <laughs> check down Jack. Uh, the guy I want to bring up is uh, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon is a player that it seems like. People are leaving for dead. You two certainly are not. You don't have him in your top 20. I've got him at 16. Mike, you've got him at 21. Andy at 23. And the more that I stop and think about it, I mean, I do I think that the Denver Broncos offense with Drew Locke is going to be outstanding? No. Be, I think be careful be what you say. The, the Denver Bronco truthers came out with force after yes. our last. They're I, I got a 12. 12 and 4 is the game. If they don't go 12 and 4, it'll be shocking to them. Oof. Just so you know. Uh, well, it's going to be a very surprising season. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think back of last season, right? And th this is a team that really does want to run the ball. They, they drafted uh, uh, 
Royce Freeman and then signed Philip Lindsay in the same year. And that's kind of been their one two punch. Remember, at the there was this big moment last year. They just couldn't get the running game going the way that they wanted. They go into their bye week in week 10. And coming out of the bye week, the all the news right before kickoff, all the reporters at the game were saying, we just heard from the coaches that it's basically Philip Lindsay's job. They're gonna they're gonna shift away from the RBBC and give it more, give Philip Lindsay more work. And they did. From that point on, he was on pace for almost 250 carries, but he didn't do well with it. He he he, you know, his great yards per carry average plummeted down when he got more utilization. And so, what do they do? They go out and sign a big money contract for Melvin Gordon. And I think Melvin yeah, Gordon is yes. Big for not big for what Melvin Gordon wanted, but that's a lot of money to pay a running back. And it certainly says you're our guy. And I believe Melvin Gordon is going to get easily north of 250 carries. And if oh, he I has, I, oof, oof. I mean, I mean, like I, a lot, 250 like, is a lot when they, when their own beat writers are saying they're not positive. He's the, he's the main guy. Uh, that's what I believe. That's why I've got him up at 16. Um, I, and, and the touchdowns. They're going to give him the opportunity. They're, they're just not signing him and bringing him in, a guy who's had a long, you know, successful history of being a goal line guy. He, he's got a nose for the end zone. When they get down there, they're going to give him the opportunity. So I, I think the money, the utilization that we saw last at the end of the, the season last year with Philip Lindsay um, and Melvin Gordon's history says he's, he's going to be okay. So, I, I, I mean, I don't have him as a running back one. But I think he's going to be a higher end running back too, not you a lower end. You have Gurley or Gordon higher? I have Gurley for the, higher. For I, the retread seasons. Yes, the retread seasons. I've got uh, Todd Gurley winning that. I, I think Gurley's actually in a pretty good spot. All right. Uh, before we close this thing out, I want to remind people, go to footclanhelp.com. We've got a live AMA on our forums this Friday, April 10th, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Going to be answering. Jason said it. He's going to try to answer every single question that comes through. So you can go directly to that thread at footclanhelp.com. We're going to help you out with answers to every question that you got. Uh, he will certainly handle any and all Boston cream related <laughs> inquiries. Also, he will handle any Boston cream donuts that you send his way. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. How is uh, the, the quarantine... Um, Weight gain attempts going. <laughs> I have been beating my record every day. Um, are you saying? In the are thread. you saying? I'm like starting to get worried about you, like a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I uh, so far I'm same clothes. So far, okay. uh, I haven't okay. had to add extensions or go into a, a new <laughs> size. Well, my wife not is great. No, full, well, full, full elastic. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. When's the last time you put on like an actual pair of pants? Okay. So That's now, a we're really not now, now, now we're getting real, Mike, no. because I've been wearing a lot of elastic through this yeah. break, and it the last time was yesterday, and it fit. Different. Still got in there. <laughs> I still got in there, but that button was that button was upset with me. That button was saying, "Dude." This hurts. Oh no! Um, you, but you, I got in, and so I'm. I think I'm good. I, look, I'm could just you trying do to. A, could you do a show in a pair of your blue jeans right now? I could, okay. but my okay. face would be buttoned. so red. <laughs> but buttoned, but like I would, I would just be sweating right now. All right, I'm just. I just take care of yourself there. Oh, I am taking we've care got of myself. Some, I'm got putting on the time. LBs every day, and and I want I want to get up to 350 by the time we're back in the studio. Oh, that's that's my... getting ready for winter. Someone get me an exercise bike. <laughs> I'm on the precipice of uh, sh like buzzing the head because I don't. I mean, who who's gonna get their hair cut over the duration of this this long quarantine? You gotta do it yourself, man. Mike trimmed his beard down. I did. It looks good. Yeah, uh, that it looks good on the camera. There was some mistakes were made. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, you are small on my screen right now, so that's that's probably a plus. Uh, Al Borland wants to know why you can't just use a regular bike because it's gorgeous outside. Oh, he says you so, don't need a Peloton, sir. Well, here's the thing. I don't, I don't own a bike. And so I've got to get one of them and one of them I can use year round. And the other one in Arizona is not going to see the light of the sun in the summer. So that's, we're, we're that's running why. out of time already in Arizona. for exactly. a bike. It's getting so hot. My kids have been swimming every day this week. That's this is insane. insane. In 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 Michigan, it's there's snow on the ground. Well, we're swimming in Arizona. I, I really hope this COVID thing doesn't like the heat because we're going to be in good shape in Arizona really, really soon. 
COVID's dead. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, listening, supporting the show. We appreciate you. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.